Traffic.tv, bringing you the news before it happens. Stream live into your home via the worldwide internet. Welcome to Profit.tv, bringing you the latest news from the spiritual front. The following program is being streamed live from Profit.tv. Join us now for Profit.tv. Join us now for Profit.tv. Program already in progress. The spirit has preeminence. All right, guys, you think you got off the hook? This is one for the guys. Submit yourself one to another. I ain't listen to that guy. This guy's a jerk. You don't know. You're not going to tell me what to do. <laughs> I got that with my spiritual father, boy. What the heck? Da, da, da. Hey, you think the fence should be red. He thinks it's green. I put him in charge. <laughs> oh, didn't want to do it. I know more than him. I'm smarter than him. He's in charge. Yeah. That's dumb. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. So why can I be just so bold? Because God taught me. Gosh, I'm being scriptural again. I will get my re the religion down, I promise, in a minute. God says, my children are those that are taught by my spirit. <coughs> Interesting, eh? All right, you feel better because a couple, I just, okay. I hope you guys feel better, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Sorry, we watched, uh, <laughs> we watched uh, Mighty Bruce, or what was it called? Bruce Almighty. Bruce Almighty last night. So what happened on the airplane? You were talking about, you met somebody, a best, uh, top lawyer? So, let's, let's play now and, and see what's possible with, with the Son of God, okay? Let's just play, and if you guys want to say arrogance and pride, all right, that's fine. You miss it. And then you got a religious vision of what God's calling you to be. If you can get an idea how God can use one man, it'll blow your mind. Um, so I'm on a plane. I'm on my way to Washington, D.C. I'm supposed to speak at a meeting. On the plane, I, this meeting just doesn't feel like, because I, I didn't, it was kind of, it wasn't a big deal. You know what I'm saying? I had a feeling it was kind of, it just didn't feel right. And I'm on the plane, and I'm like, God, I need to be back in Santa Monica plowing and doing, what am I, what am I going to Washington for? He said, Don, you're my point man. I said, what? I leaned to the guy next to me and said, uh, what's a point man? He said, oh, easy. You know, like when you got like these five teams come in and you got the main army way back, they send the five elite team in, but they know where the snipers are, where the, where the bombs are, or any, they don't know where the troops are, so they send them out. But five stay back and they send one. He's the point man and he draws fire. And when they start shooting to kill him, the other guys stand up and take out the snipers. He said, unfortunately, the point man usually gets killed. <laughs> I said, I said, God, I said, what kind of a job is this? I said, Th thanks a lot. Now, do you know that, um, do you know that most wars that we've ever had were won by the sniper? or by a five-man elite team because they took out key people, key targets. And then the rest of the military would kind of come in, doop, 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 half of them never fired their guns. Does that make sense? Um, and you bring in your occupying force. Um, I remember when I was doing a lot of plowing in here and the types of anointings and revelations and things that God would do through me in the spirit to deal with the types of demons and stuff. This has had gates of hell open by the Dalai Lama, by others in this territory. They've done uh, salmon dolls. They've done Kala Chakra initiatives at the, at the Santa Monica Studios. Uh, Anton LaVey, the Church of Satan, used to be right out here, um, wrote the Satanic Bible. There's been rit ritual, sexual stuff, ritual abuses. Uh, this, this thing was thick. Christians wouldn't even come into this territory. Uh, the top book writers that want to sell you guys all their books. Oh, I got my butt kicked in there. Why should they buy your books? You're going to raise up more of the same. Does that make sense? What are we trying to do? I need, we need some conquerors out there. We need some ideas of what's possible and those that have survived. People that can conquer and survive in my book are worth listening to because apparently, A, they got to know God better than I do. That B, they got to be following him better. C, God's anointing and favor has got to be on them, so God must be confirming them, even if I don't understand their frustration. 
from being shot in the back, from having troops pulled out. Does that make sense? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even though I don't understand that, and they're not perfect. But a, but a, a, a sniper could hold down, could hold down an entire battalion. He could shoot from a two miles. I mean, a ridiculous. He outranged them to start with. They were afraid because he was a one shot, one kill. He was deadly. Does that make sense? Guy steps out of the bunker. Bam, he's down. Bam, he's down. They could hold a whole platoon down. That caused the enemy to put a high price on the sniper's head. The sniper could stay out of sight, out of range, hidden for extended periods of time because he was resourceful without having the support of the body of Christ, without having the support of the army. He was able on his own to sustain. He was very well trained. I used to say, God, how come I know how to do so many things? Oh, yeah, you're a jack of all trade. You, know, you get all the put downs in life. But then you start finding God run you on elite missions that the majority of the body of Christ cannot understand, will not understand, do not acknowledge as God. Yet you do the plowing and the exploding and your life's laid on the line and it's taken beyond your life and it's only the anointing that sustains you. And then the territory opens up and people want to come in and teach their lack of authority revelation you think if that prophet's gone you don't think come on when a spirit goes out of a man or a city it'll try to come back what seven times stronger what's going to happen if the spirit of religion tries to raise up people in a territory that it took a son of god to drive out and they try to come back spirit of religion and people raised up on that revelation they don't know how to fight it they're not even going to discern when it came back they didn't even know it was here in the first place in fact it drove their butt out of there Am I talking about, I'm not calling people fools, am I? No. <laughs> I'm just trying to get some clarity and some reality here. You know, all, I'm doing this totally selfishly. I'm tired of being on the front line. The more warriors are out, the less hits I take. And I can't not take territory from the devil for my Lord. I love him too much. And he's trained me too well. So you've got somehow, you've got to reach in and get the ones called by his name that have the potential to become sons of God that are currently sons of religion. You've got to break that veil and make, bring them to be sons of God. Mm -hmm. Or we never get this war over with. Isn't that interesting? Do you realize that snipers were also despised by their own team, their own people? You know why? The regular army scared to death of them. That there's a murdering SOB. That guy murders everybody. How many people you killed? You killed hundreds. Sounds like David. Do you realize David became a king because Saul only killed thousands? David killed tens of thousands? What? Of God's enemy. Today, we're not fighting people. We don't kill people. Today, we're fighting powers and principalities. We destroy the works of the devil by his anointing, by what he accomplished at Calvary. We are the police force that takes his anointing get off my land I come in the name of Jesus this is the authority of God back off of my kids back off of my school get off our government does that make sense okay we're not fighting people but it is a warrior mentality a spiritual warrior mentality do you realize that I've been to some of the big Beverly Hills things Bring me back to the plane. I'll get there. <laughs> I've been to the big... Uh, hold on a second. That tape went out. Um, <laughs> Don't... Restroom. Oh, restroom break. Can we have, have break. Take a break here. Um, we need to move just a tab because as you pull that way, I'm getting the wall. All right. Get me back on the track. Uh, many times, snipers had one the war because they could pin down an entire troop uh, she brought up how there was a movie about how one sniper won the Russian war but you really see that that's actually true because they could pin a troop down they were excellent that one shot one kill it put fear in the other enemy don't you know in a warfare even in spiritual warfare you want the devil to know your name and you want him afraid of you when the devil's not afraid of you and he intimidates you and you back down you can, like a bully, he'll chase you around. I used to say to my spiritual father, how come the devil doesn't mess with you? He's messing with me. He said, he's just trying to see what you're made of. Just trying to see what you're made out of. Once you begin to learn how 
the, what the anointing is in you, how to take that dominion, how to take that authority, you'll start to enter in and the devil will go, no contest, no contest. And other things that used to bug you all the time, your authority just continues to increase and increase, okay? But, so Sniper had a great price on his head, that the enemy put a great price on his head, because it could stop a whole battalion from moving into a territory. Um, they had to take that sniper out. So snipers had about an 80% mortality rate. Today, if you have a prophet or a sniper doing great exploits, oh, the Bible said in Daniel, a bunch will be running to and fro in knowledge and confusion, but those that know God will do great exploits. Isn't that interesting? If you have a prophet doing great exploits, and we're going to talk about some of the exploits possible, um, uh, and he dies, well, you say, well, see, we're not supposed to do that. And he was a needless casualty of war. We're all going to die, guys. Mm -hmm. The key, like Paul said, by what means are you going to glorify God? Mm -hmm. By what means will your death glorify God? Get a reality check. Get out of the soul. Get out of the humanistic religion of Jesus and start understanding where somebody sits in the spirit. Um, um, Jesus said to answer her question Jesus said to Peter who do you say I am?" he says oh well, you're the son of God he revealed you heard from the spirit of God um, and you stepped out with what you heard upon that revelation is how the gates of hell will not prevail how could I do any of the plowing I was doing I didn't do it by reading a book I did it by listening and being obedient listening and correct revelations and being taught by God everything I'm doing is being taught by God but I had great spiritual parents that had a lot of authority um, uh, one of the things my spiritual mom said was, I learned from the time I was a kid, and I realized that most people at most churches in L.A. and across the nation and around the world have never heard this. Many anointed, called men and women of God had their lives cut short and their ministry cut short. They were taken out before their time because they didn't have enough prayer covering or support. When I was taken on this principality, I've done several in here, and this last, uh, the one that we were dealing with down here, um, God said, after it lost, it did a one-on-one -on -one and lost, and I'll, I'll go through that right now, maybe tell you a little bit more detail later. God said, I do not want you to go up against this alone. It's particularly treacherous. It will try to turn people on you and then take you out. Okay, God's teaching me. My spiritual parents have taught me. So I knew I couldn't advance against this thing until there's an ability for people to stand and hold covenant. And I've watched this thing gossip about me. It, I mean, you just, and, and you guys have probably heard it, year after year. I mean, this thing has been, I'm like, oh my, usually six months to take a prince out. This was totally different because now I had to start entering into men's world and men's souls and men's foolishness is what I'm hearing God say. I had to enter into men's foolishness. The, the religious pride and foolishness veiled in false humility, known as the modern church. Does that make sense? They don't understand the spirit. They don't understand holding covenant. They don't understand when you're hearing in your thought, you're hearing bad things or you're hearing stuff, or even if the guy's messing up, so what? It's not about that. It's about the purpose and destiny and call. When Jesus rebuked Peter and said, uh, af after Peter's in the spirit, you're the son of God. Oh, Jesus said, I'm going to go get crucified. I'm going to do this. Jesus said, no, 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 no. I or Peter says, no, no, no. I love you. I love you. I will not let it happen. Jesus turned and said, Satan, identifying the motive, the spirit behind him, said, Satan, get behind me. You are mindful of the things of men. Let's put it in English. Satan, you are mindful of what matters to men. So, I'll defend you. How about this? Have you ever prayed for somebody to cast a demon out? And the demon said, and I watched a father say, my son had a spirit of sickness, and I prayed, and he didn't get healed. So I said, God, give me the sickness, not my son. And all of a sudden, his temperature came from 115 or whatever, and he was healed, and mine was 115. And this was his testimony in front of a men's group. Yeah, you got to go to those men's group. Boy, that's really good stuff. You know, you need to go to a spiritual group where people know what they're talking about, because that's bad food. You don't go sacrificing yourself. See, the problem is a demon will do that. You know what happened? I went up, I pulled him. I didn't do it publicly because I was trying to not dishonor him in front of everybody that was like, yeah, I'm going to try that prayer. Moron. Oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, it's just ignorance. I'm sorry. I said, do you realize you invited the demon to transfer into you? And it did. That wasn't God. You didn't walk in revelation authority to just command the demon out. You kept asking God. You didn't command the demon out. God's concerning the works of my hands. Command ye me. You're supposed to rule and reign with me. Why didn't you command it out? Why didn't you tell that mountain to move? Why didn't you tell that problem to move? Why didn't you take authority? Because you're outside the kingdom begging me for a miracle. You're not walking in the kingdom with me taking your God-given authority that I died to give you. 
because you've been under a religious revelation. Assuredly, I tell you, speak to that mountain, do not doubt what you say will come to pass. Uh, we got a problem here? <laughs> Pretty clean. <laughs> the key is, do you doubt in your heart? Well, it might not be God's will. Well, good, that's enough confusion to stop it from happening. Why don't you find out what God's will is then? And once you know God's will, then speak it. Maybe he wants them to die. Maybe he wants them to live. Smith Wigglesworth raised his own wife from the dead even when God was trying to take her. And God had to say, hey, hey, let her come. <laughs> Get a clue. He's making us sons of God. We have free will, and he, he takes us into those authorities. But because he was submitted, he let her go. God, I can't do it without her. Fine. He cried for weeks on her grave and said, I'm not leaving unless you give me a double anointing, her anointing and my, what was on her life on me. That makes sense? And Smith cried the rest of his life. But he, the anointing was incredible. The miracles were amazing. The depth that he entered in with God. Um, so here's the problem. Once he tells Peter what he's, he's in the spirit, I'm going to get crucified. It's going to change the dynamics of history forever. The dynamics are going to be completely changed forever. Uh, Peter, not so, I won't let it happen. Get behind me, Satan, you're mindful of the things of men. Why did Jesus say that? Because it was pulling Jesus into his soul. Jesus, didn't, Jesus, the man, his soul didn't want to die. Just like us, we don't want to lay our lives down. How many of you guys helped me fight a, this principality that was over Freaky Links? How many of the big shots that like to collect money and be the big voice of God showed up? I love, what's his name on 6.40 um, a.m. from, what is it, 7 to 10, Phil Henry? Did you guys catch him the other day when the guy was beheaded and Phil Henry's playing both sides? You know, how, you know, do you guys know that Phil Henry does a second voice that's actually him, but it's his guest? Oh, yeah. And then they bring the third voice in, which is the person that doesn't know that it's Phil Henry. And the one guy is a total whack and yeah. Phil's defending, yeah. but it's really Phil. You guys know that, don't you? Yeah. Funniest thing. Yeah. So this guy's playing, so Phil's playing this wimpy Christian. You guys didn't see this? It was hilarious. Does, and, he, does he play Jesus? Is that the guy I'm thinking of that has a radio station in the morning? No, no, this is at night, 7 to 10, 640. So he's playing a wimpy Christian. Okay, and he gets a wimpy Christian on. He goes, and is it really true that you're giving up your Christian faith because the man was beheaded? Well, yeah, I don't think I should have to go over there. I mean, you know, let Rexella go over over there. And let Brexella's faith be tested. Or, or, or let Benny Hinn go over and let his, let's see if he comes back with his head on a platter. But Phil was playing both sides. It's hilarious. But he was playing the little wimpy Christian. He was also pointing out what somebody recently said on TV too. We need, we don't need men pulling everybody into yet another teaching. We need men to lead into MTV. Lead into the world. Our leaders are not leading. And that's really what he was saying. He was saying, no, they pull us off into a subculture. They're not leading us into the world. I've been saying for a long time, go get a job at MTV. <laughs> Unless we've been following the leaders around in the wilderness. Remember, we couldn't go into the promised land because they wouldn't go, so they wandered around playing religious games, and now we're all too old to get into MTV. Does that make sense? <laughs> Hello? We've been, we're good at the religious, boy, I've been going around that merry-go-round for a while. Hello? And now, I mean, I sit down going, God, I can't believe how many years I wasted. But he's like, it's okay, you were learning with me. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? What was in the news today? MTV, the beheading, well, not beheading, more, so our bombing to blow up an ammunitions dump, which was in a home, but instead we're really bad guys because a little bit of fallout happened around the edge. 16 people. You know what I'm saying? Well, that, a lot of that was because of the 20 minutes worth of arsenal blowing up and it continued to explode because they had, they had explosives, they had ammunition. Yeah. You know, a, a, a bomb comes in and goes, boom! And then what goes, boom, 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 for the next 20 minutes, wiping everything and everybody and bullets flying everywhere and shrapnel is all the ammunitions that the bombs were sending to blow up, but that weren't there. Because America's a big bad guy. Because the media, why? Because we're not in the media. And the people in the media are by another spirit. Mm, you yes. Wake up! You've been following the Pied Piper of escapism. Why weren't you going into the world? Why aren't you sitting at that news desk? Mm. Like Shambach's grandson is. Mm. Granddaughter, rather, is. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. She's not waiting to rapture. She's waiting to occupy something so she can tell the story from God's point of view gosh did we wait so long ah. 
What was happening is Peter in the soul was pulling Jesus into his soul and it was weakening him from staying in the spirit to carry out what he knew he had to do, which was to die. Another time we saw Jesus in the soul was outside the kingdom. He wasn't commanding a miracle. He was saying, take this cup. I don't want to do this. This is not a good idea. He's in the soul. And it said the angel came and strengthened him. You know what I think the angel did? Jesus, remember who you are. You're not this soulish human. Remember who you are. Remember who the glory you are. Remember who you are. Come on, come on. You're, 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 you're getting sucked into the soul. You're not going to fulfill your destiny if you don't walk in the Spirit. Mm. I had somebody say to me the, the other day, well, you're, you're not wife material. You're too committed to the stuff of God. Mm. And don't you know that wives are committed to their own lives and their own soulish stuff? Does that make sense? You're not, you would not be good wife material. Isn't that funny? Because you're too committed to God. Well, I probably won't. I'll probably spend money on what God wants me to spend money on. I'll probably tend to do what I've always done, which is to listen to God and see significant change happen in the nation. Mm -hmm. And hopefully some women will get in the spirit too because I, don't, I think I've learned enough that where Adam blew it that I don't want to blow that. Now that might not be real good for a soulish woman who really wants to run things. But, uh, and so yeah, you were right. It might not be good wife material in the current female spirit that's trying to run the world. It might not fit. But hopefully there'll be some daughters of God that will move into the spirit too. Hey, what a concept. And hopefully we can move more people in the spirit. Hey, and hopefully the knowledge of God and listening to him and doing what he says and walking in the blessing. Hey, and hopefully he strengthened me enough that, that if there's a problem, I don't buckle. Okay, dear, whatever you want. I don't care. God, I, 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 did, I didn't want to sleep on the couch. I know we screwed up for all of mankind. <laughs> but my wife loved me that night. It was good, too. <laughs> was it worth it? Uh, I, I don't know. Seemed like it at the time. All right. So, sometimes the devil, using love, can pull you out of the spirit. Isn't that amazing? What greater love has a man than he lays his life down for his brethren? So I'm on the airplane, and God says, point man. And the guy next to me says, point man. It's kind of the way I teach, or the way God does it through me. It's kind of like watching TV. You ever get bored in channel surf? And you get like three stories, you know, you just, <laughs> and then, you know, because we get bored, right? In movies today, they do that, right? They keep running three or four stories. Put that on hold now. Pick up on this one. We get bored easily. I'm just trying to see if we can all stay with us. All right. Here we go. See how much fun it is. Okay. Um, it plays havoc on the editor. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so God tell me an appointment. The guy next to me said, yeah, that's the guy that's led out ahead that draws fire to expose where the enemy's encamped. So then the other guys can take out the enemy so that the main troops can now advance in. Unfortunately, he has a high, more, about 80% mortality. Same thing as a sniper. Isn't that interesting? Great, God, thanks a lot. So God gives me in Washington couple African ambassadors are throwing some kind of a meeting. They don't have unity with the church, and the church aren't listening. They don't believe. God's sending so many African pastors in right now, because the Africans understand about water spirits. They understand about voodoo. They understand about witch doctors. They understand about the spirit realm. The American church doesn't. So God's trying to get America saved anyway. And besides, you know, when we went into Africa and started conquering those spirits of witchcraft, anybody have any idea? You ever heard of displacement theology? What churches do you go to? You ever heard of displacement theology? When a spirit goes out of a man, it goes to dry places. <laughs> People are like going, displacement? You're just making stuff up as you go. God. <laughs> when a spirit goes out of a man, it goes to dry places. Get your Bibles out, everybody. Come on. You know, you guys do the 101, and I'll take them from there into the stuff of the spirit. You know, get the foundations of the scripture. Otherwise, you won't recognize the spirit of God when he's talking to you. Um, when the spirit started coming, when we started hitting Africa, the witchcraft demons started coming over here. Didn't, haven't you noticed? And we didn't have any spiritual walls up. So they invaded us. And the church retreated because it had no clue what was going on. And the principalities even controlled the mind and made them retreat. And they couldn't understand they were being controlled. And a spirit of fear and intimidation started going into the church. Interesting. So um, anyway, in Africa, they're wanting me to come together and come against the ruling prince, uh, not Africa, in Washington, D.C., come against the ruling principalities. And like a moron, I start listening to a man and start to do it. The warfare is like ridiculous with the witchcraft. And all of a sudden, God's like, what are you doing? 
You don't, you don't live here. You don't have authority here. You're not coveted with anybody that has authority. Even if you plowed something out, who's going to occupy it when you leave? It's stupid. It's a total waste of energy time. You, you can't leave. A, you can't bring. There's no military to follow you in. Even if you demolition this place, there's nothing to occupy and follow you in. Does that make sense? All right. Um, and, and plus you're listening to men telling me you're not listening to me. Anyway, so I'm like, so I stopped that one. But anyway, um, warfare was ridiculous. You know, I'm just coming in as stupid. No supply lines, nothing. It's like a little naked soldier standing up there. Sh bing, bing, ha, 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 bing, bing. Suicide run? All right. So there's a, there's a way, there's a method to how it's done. Um, so the next morning, 5 a.m., I'm at a prayer meeting on the, at a house right across, like we look out the window and you can see the steps of the Capitol. And uh, at the end of the meeting, Oh, gosh. I don't know what it is. I just really want to... I just... I love ragging on nutty things. <laughs> the leader of the meeting... Do I do this or not? No, let's just keep... I don't know. I don't know how to do this. I don't want everybody to just start ragging on everything bad, and I, I hate when I see... Um, the leader of the meeting, who was a friend of Brownback's neighbor... Um, and he's in a bunch of stuff. We probably all get emails if he's, anyway, look at me, I'm just like attacking. I don't want to attack it. He's up there and it's very religious and the meeting's very well controlled and everything. And his wife is very nice. She looks like Little House on the Prairie. Does that make sense? Like very properly dressed. Does that make sense? And everything very nice. Um, definitely not on the Vogue or anything popular. Um, and they're having a problem because the senator's wives got together at a tea party and decided to pass a bill or to do this particular thing. And so they picketed in front of it and fasted for a week. And they did it anyway. And they couldn't understand. And I'm thinking, you moron, why don't you buy your wife some decent, some modern clothes? Why don't you get her invited to some of the tea parties so she can have relationships with the women so when they're talking about the next thing that they want to do, she can have a little ability to steer the direction. Don't you understand when we're there? It's just in Things happen when people get together. Playboy, things happen because there's no spirit of God was in there. A different spirit. And, and I started Playboy earlier. Do you realize how for how many years... Major billionaires around the world, businessmen, government, attorneys, lawyers, judges. Does that make sense? <sighs> celebrities, male, female celebrities, rock and roll stars, rap stars, every influential person that has an ability to have people that listen to what they say hung out there and was infected by the same spirit. Wicca witches were in there. They had witch events. Everything you can imagine. The only thing that wasn't in there was the spirit of God. That was a safe haven because you were taught, oh, don't you dare go around those sinners. Therefore, you had no influence on it. Jesus said, go into the darkness. Be a light in every darkness. Go into empty. Everything that you can see dark, get a job there. Work your way into those relationships. Get to those dinner parties. Build relationships. A wise man wins souls. Uh, say the sinner's prayer. That's not what it meant. David had enemies all around him. God, my enemies are all around me. Da, 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 da. Does that make sense? He finally figured out a wise man wins souls. Jesus said it like this. He who's not against me, he who's for me cannot easily come against me. When you have people that are your relationships that are in these places and they know you, it's a lot easier for them to talk against you than when you're outside throwing rocks at what they're doing in their dinner parties. Mm -hmm. When you're in the dinner party and you prayed over the, and you just have a relationship, don't go in all religious, just go in human. Yeah. Talk like they talk. Be normal. Yes, I'm hearing somebody say, well, you, no, you can't. You can't. You got to tell people to set a standard. Yes, set a standard, but not to the point of pushing your moral religious law on them. Be all things to all people. Meet them. Jesus meets them where they, where they are. Do you have a problem doing that? Half of these people weren't even as bad as you guys. Jesus went after the worst first, I think. And then he has us going after the ones that aren't so bad. So come on, remember where you came from. Get a clue. Could, you know, we don't go in with that, yeah, I'm a Christian and you're a sinner looking down your nose at people. Come on, that's so horrible. <laughs> Pious, prideful, yeah. Okay. Anyway. So I'm sitting in this meeting, I'm sorry, and the, the meeting's going, you know, according to whatever, and I'm just, and the spirit's turning me in. It's a very polite, well-organized meeting. Does that make sense? And they couldn't understand why the wives couldn't get a change. I'm thinking to myself, oh, God, I really want to say something. The guy, you know, what's he thinking with? 
Um, and uh, they're just caught under a religious spirit. They're caught under a religious mode, and, and they think the idea is to push a moral, religious agenda on other people. That's not it. Introduce them to the guy who loved them enough to die for them and let him work their salvation out, and you work on your own. Just introduce them. Let the Holy, don't do the Holy Spirit's work. We've got to push a moral agenda on you guys to where we raise up a whole other opposites. And what are we doing now? We've got two opposites fighting. It makes it hard for those of us that are trying to infiltrate. That's why it's like, okay, well, I'm not like one of them. Boy, the religious will tell you that. Anyway, um, so the meeting's over, and I'm like, God, what was the whole point of all this? And he says, I want you to pray for that man. Okay? And I go to pray for him. As soon as I go to pray for him, I see this horrible, huge wedge, like razor-sharp wedge like this in the spirit, and it's witchcraft, and it's set to just cut his heart in half. And I don't understand what that weapon is, but I'm seeing it in the spirit. Why? Because God's razor. I mean, I've been dealing with princes, dealing with stuff. I understand. I've been dealing with this stuff. Did I want to do this? No. But I just said, God, do something significant with my life. Kind of like what Catherine Coleman said. I don't got anything. If you can use this, do it. Sorry, don't mean to be so intense with my relationship. You didn't know I had a relationship with Jesus. You thought I just like to talk about demons. <laughs> I tell you what, I'd be running scared from the demons like you are if I didn't know Jesus. And I wouldn't lay my life down like you won't if I didn't know Jesus. When you know him, you have a love, and you will lay your life down for other people that are still dead in their sin. That's when you've actually, don't try and fake it. That's what we're doing in church. We're acting. We're acting. We act in no polite. We don't talk like this. We do this. We do that. You know what? <laughs> Stop it. Let, let die. Oh, we do that too, man. We crucify the disciples. Leave it alone. Let God do it. Does that make sense? Um, so I pray for this guy. See this witchcraft? I go, Braba and I break that right now. Ooh, that nobody prayed like that at that meeting. You know, it's one of those meetings where you like you can feel the ceilings here. You know what I'm saying? It, you know what that ceiling is? It's the demonic. You know that, don't you? Man of God blasts a ceiling wide. You'll have an open heaven. Oh man, that comes in on a lot of those religious meetings. Ooh, I hate those. Because nothing gets done. They're such a waste of time. We all play religious stuff. Ugh. I don't want to pray. I don't want to hang out. I don't want to do religion if something's not going to change. It's not going to change. Don't waste my time. I got a life, and it's private. <laughs> so don't stick your nose in it. <laughs> and you guys, that, we need to start doing that with each other. Give each other a little bit of respect. Spec. The Bible says, a mighty spiritual army like the world has never seen, not breaking rank. What's that mean? Every snail is on his own trail. <laughs> and he's not minding his brother's business. And he's leaving a little Holy Ghost tunnel everywhere he goes, and he leaves the presence of God. Do you realize when you walk in prayer walk in territory, you leave a little Holy Ghost snail trail? <laughs> you leave the white in the darkness. You're plowing through darkness. And the more you walk, the clearer it gets. And when you don't walk, the overbrush grows in. You have to have an occupational... Listen, the body of Christ should walk for its health's sake. Yes. Come on. The women are like, I'm believing for a husband. The men are like, I'm believing for a wife. It's like, go walk for a while, will you? Exactly. Go to the gym. Come on. Does that make sense? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with trying to look good. Oh, well, I can't glory in the flesh. Yeah. You should love me the way I am. Well, if you love me, you'd want to make yourself a good gift, wouldn't you? If I loved you, I'd want to make myself a good gift. You know, hello? Does the world have more respect for itself than we do? What's going on? We need to give them our moral agenda. That's it. Yeah. You know, you know what my favorite thing is? Oh gosh, I'm getting, in, I'm getting into it. We can do it like fun. I'm just, it's fun, right? You know the way the body of Christ typically responds to a problem? Waits for the rock to be formed. Waits for a rock to be thrown. Hits them in the head. Then they duck. Then they buy a book about the rock that just hit him in the head. <laughs> Harry Potter. Harry Potter is witchcraft. <laughs> Duh! Mm -hmm. Hello? Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, we've been teaching. They didn't want to hear there was witchcraft. They didn't want to look at the, you know what I'm saying? People are conjuring up friggin' demons. I didn't say that word. Just trying to shake people out of religion. And I got news for you. More of the people that are in that stuff listen to me. I don't care if the religious don't listen to me. I care if people that are bound by the demons listen to me. Because it's not about trying to get you religious. It's not about trying to get you all P's and Q's. God never told me, don't do this, don't do that. He just said, well, you know what happens when, when uh, 
when Solomon, it wasn't that he had another wife, he had a wife of another spirit. And when he made love to the women of another spirit, that spirit entered into his heart and it changed his heart. Don't you understand demons transfer during sex? The fastest way to get demonized is through sex. Why do you think all these things had witchcraft, has sexual things in it? Um, they had temple prostitutes. Why? The fastest way to transfer demons is through sex. Demons transfer through sex. Oh my God, I didn't want to get demonized. He just showed me what's happening. He didn't say, do 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 do. He just, I'm like, oh my God. Does that make sense? The, the law or the religion, what it does is says, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. Don't. So what guys do is they walk through life with little, with little blinders on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh my God, I looked at that girl and it was, I like, and it was good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh my God, I'm, just, oh, I'm thinking about, say, oh, I'm a pervert, I'm a pervert. Oh. And then they, and then they, my favorite one is the safety hugs. <laughs> right? They do a safety hug. Make sure those nasty little titties don't touch me. <laughs> what, what is the message I'm putting in my head? Does that make sense? Right. That those are naughty. Wait a second. Let's get... The key here is what's healthy. If somebody has a spirit of lust, and you can tell when they hug you because you can feel it, then by all means. But don't you understand? Let's take a guy at home. He's got two sisters and a mom. All right, for the sake of just being stupid here, and they might be well endowed. Might not. Doesn't matter, right? I think it's called a bosom, right? Isn't that in the love of the bosom? Isn't that where the baby is nurtured and coddled in the love of the bosom? Isn't that it's the idea is a bosom? Hello? Um, uh, that's a safe place. Do you realize half the, thing, half the thing that's happening with men, by the way, and then it gets perverted? Do you realize that men are out in the world fighting, kicking, fighting, and they want to go back home to when they were a little boy in a safe place? Some, and what's the Bible say? Let a man's, let, a, let your wife's breasts satisfy you. What's it talking about? Getting all perverted with them? No, it's talking about a bosom. It's talking about that, that coddling, that safe, that, that, that just, oh, I can rest from, just, I can, I can go back to when I was a little, I can, every day I'm fighting, plowing, fighting, you know what I'm saying? And it's a, it's a, it's a safe place. It's like a wife is supposed to be a safe harbor. What's the Bible say? Let the man, let, uh, uh, blessed is a man whose heart is safe with his wife. He can be vulnerable. He knows she's not going to use it against him. <laughs> That's not today. <laughs> Boy, she won't let him hear the end of it. Does that make sense? A woman, a wife is supposed to be a safe harbor for her husband. That's the whole thing. But, and, and I thank God, I can't believe the, the power that you give a woman over a man. You make a man with all this authority, all this strength, but yet he is so vulnerable to that wife. And do you realize that men usually have one relationship? Women have tons. They got their emotional eggs in tons of baskets. Men, usually the wives. Otherwise, it's business. And then, then when the wife, that really messes him up. I mean, it's amazing what God does. But anyway, um, what's the message we're saying then when we give people the law? We give them the law. We give them the law. Sex is bad. Great. I bet you're going to have a great honeymoon. <laughs> you're going to be so programmed that this is so bad and so nasty and so naughty that you're not going to be able to enjoy your honeymoon. And it's going to probably go through therapy if your marriage survives the first year of your phobia. Does that make sense? Right. Getting sorted out back that this is healthy. No, the key is what is healthy. Recognize a spirit. If there's a spirit transferring, if there's a spirit of lust moving, if they need deliverance, hey, don't do it. If, it's the guy, if the guys are coming in and it's a pickup thing or the chick's moving in her thing, hey, somebody, we need to deal with that. Does that make sense? But look, healthy is a guy that's got a mom and two sisters, and he's on the computer, and they're fighting him and getting in his face trying to get on the computer. And oh my God, you know, it's like, she, and he's like, would you get out, let me get, get out of here. Does that make sense? He can't stand it. Quit touching me. Quit bumping into me. Get your body off of me. No, we need the computer. If I'm going to tell mom, did it, they're not thinking. It's just, right? Take a guy into church and starve him from, we need hugs, hello, we need like real life hugs, starve him from that, and you know what, that guy's in an elevator and the first time a woman's body part touches him, <laughs> I think you're my wife, <laughs> and the women in church are like, you guys are freaks, and so the women in church marry men in the world, because the men in the world are getting hugged and touched to the point where they're not even thinking about it, they're all loved up. But we've, we've, instead of imparting the spirit and telling what happens and then teaching health is health, hello, or teaching how to tell when there's a the guy's got a spirit of pornography, he needs a deliverance here. Right. Da, 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 you know what I'm saying? Instead of dealing with this, we're not taught about the spirit, we're given the law. Right. And the law was given as a schoolmaster to keep us from getting demon possessed. That's what the law was given to the Jews for. And the way they got the demons out was a blood sacrifice. 
You understand that, right? We all know that? We don't know that? That's taught in church, right? You understand that? They would pray the sins, the demons. When you sin, you open a door to the spirit realm, and that spirit gains legal access into your life and claims your children. For, we're taught in the church, right? Claims your, it's, I'm, it's the word. What are we taught in church? I don't know what we're taught. Keep the rules. Keep the rules. Anyway, that spirit gains legal access. The only way to get rid of that spirit was to pray it into the scapegoat and cut the door of life. Why? In Genesis, there's no remission of sin but by the shedding of blood. Life is in the blood. Sorry for all the Bible quotes. That's for the religious. Does that make sense? All right. So they would get the sins out. Okay. Um, the law was a schoolmaster until faith was born. But most of us are still walking under the law. And we're judging people that, aren't, that are in the world and trying to take them under our law. And we can't even see it. And we're judging constantly. We're not introducing them to the guy that loves them. We don't even know the guy that loves them. We know the law. And we know our own condemnation. God's not happy. We spend our whole life trying to make God happy. I don't understand. I didn't do anything. I didn't do that. And I didn't get blessed. And I didn't get this. And I didn't get a family. And I didn't get this. Well, why don't you get married? Blessed is he that finds a wife. Well, I was keeping myself. I was, you know, I'm not trying to, I shouldn't use that. That's bad because I'm not saying, hey, go, you know, I'm not, bleh, I'm not trying to promote that at all. But what I'm trying to say is sometimes we get what we sow or we don't get because we didn't sow. You want a family? Hey, maybe you should start focusing that way. And if you want a family, maybe guys, you should really start thinking about how am I going to survive a family because without finances that's usually the number one breakup of families so maybe I should focus on my business and quit focusing right now on trying to date everybody because sometimes we spend too much time dating or trying to date when we should be taking care of business does that make sense you'll know the season but if you really want it to work how about this you know you're, you're such a pushover you know you're, you don't have any backbone in you you know, you let the wife get away with murder. And I'm not saying that we're supposed to beat up women, but I'm saying you don't, can't even discipline your own flesh. If you can't discipline your flesh and God's putting you the head, how are you going to discipline your little kid's flesh? Does that make sense? If you, if you don't recognize your own flesh, how about when your wife's right and your flesh is in the way? And you don't recognize your own flesh. You're going to fight her on that? Oh, that's a time when you need to, hey, God was talking to you through her. That happens too. We, hey, guess what? Guys are not the omnipotent ones here. But if we don't start recognizing our flesh, does that make sense? I'm talking when the flesh is running through the whoever. Does that make sense? If we don't understand when the Spirit of God motivates us or moves like prophetically, and I, no, no, something's up. Why are you attacking that corporation? Because something's up. Well, guess what? They got ex a whole bunch of stuff happened. Why? Because it was a wrong spirit. Does that make sense? And yet, oh, you shouldn't be talking about, it's not me, it's God. If you don't recognize how the Spirit works, the whole thing, what are we trying to do? We're trying to recognize the Spirit of God, aren't we? And trying to hear from God. We're not trying to promote a religious, a God, wouldn't it be awful if the whole world, I should not say another guy's name, so I won't, came under the pastor in Texas. See, there's a lot of them there. Some of them I like, too. Anyway, wouldn't it be interesting if the whole world came under that? God had prophets. He had judges. And God's idea, I believe, was that we didn't have one man over us, but that each person was about their father's business and heard what God said and learned to listen to God. How many people have been out prophecy chasing lately? Oh, let's go here. We get a word. Let's go here. Let's get a word. God says, how about I give you a word? You know, how about you go back to school like I told you to do? How about you quit playing church and, and, and get an education? Does that make sense? How about you start thinking about the family that I want to give you? The more days you qu qu don't do what I say, the longer you hold that blessing up. You can try and do it in your flesh, and it'll be miserable, and then you'll blame me for it. And it's all predicated on the fact you were running around trying to get a word, and I told you to go back to school. You didn't do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like, how many, how many churches, okay, stand in this line for healing, stand in this line for prophecy. Prophecy's a big thing right now. I'm a prophet, and you realize I don't like to prophesy to people? Because people start putting you up as their private fortune teller. And that's not what you're here for. You're here to accurately help people discern and learn to discern. Don't you understand? If you can't learn to discern demons and how they influence you, how the heck are you going to recognize the right voice? You think if you sit in church and go, I want the love of God. I want the love. I get the love. I feel the love. I feel the love. I'm like riding mommy's bosom. It's, it's wonderful. I'm back home. I'm loved. Do you realize that that's not the love of a father? That's the love of a mommy? 
and it's okay for the babies. Does that make sense? The love of a father kicks you in the butt sometimes. Says, I love you, but I'm not putting up the crap. I told you to go back to school. Now get on it. I know better than you do. Do I have to fight your flesh? Get that new program. Does that make sense? Do I have to fight your flesh? I'm trying to take you somewhere. I'm trying to do something with you. The longer you fight it, the harder, the longer it takes for you to be blessed. God, I don't understand. I was, I was part of the church. I did this all. I did everything I was told to do. I submitted to everybody. Da, 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 da. Good. You were around in the desert. You weren't doing what I told you to do. My job's not to prophesy to you. My job, and, and oh, well, that's because you can't pro oh, Come on, stop it. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm bringing revelation. I'm bringing revelation of the Spirit of God, the presence of God, so that you begin to hear. You should be feeling very excited about your own individual lives about now. You should be feeling excited about what God can do with you and that He is going to do something with you that's very unique and different and how your life is the most unique thing in this room. That's what you should be feeling. And if you're feeling that way, then the Spirit of God is talking to you individually. Mm -hmm. If you're no longer looking at, what, oh, look how blessed he is, or look what he's got, oh, he's got a better coat, he's got a better car, she's got a better this. Stop it. That's because you're insecure about your own life. When you get done listening, being in the presence of God, you should feel that the number one important thing for you is you and God and what you guys are going to do together. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you're starting to feel, then the right spirit's here. Does that make sense? So God takes me in, I pray for this guy, I see witchcraft, witchcraft is broke, I break it in Jesus' name, we're on the steps of the Capitol in Washington, D.C., I break it in Jesus' name, and then I pray and I go, and there's something else on your back here, and I break that too, in the name of Jesus. The guy's back's healed. <laughs> I don't know it right away, but the guy that's friends with Senator Brownback, whose house, you know, the whole thing, oh, he goes, oh, he's got a major problem with me. As soon as the demons come out, they immediately hit the leader, the, the religious leader of the meeting, and he doesn't like the way I'm praying. Of course, he didn't break the witchcraft, and he didn't get the meeting changed, and he's not getting results, and um, w would not introduce me to Brownback because he couldn't control me. Isn't that funny? Didn't the Bible say those that are controlled by the Spirit are kind of blown? Like, you never quite know what they're going to do. Isn't that funny? But it didn't. Anyway, I thought that was pretty interesting. I did have a conversation with him on the phone at one point. Tried to share a couple things with him. He called me prideful. He called me this. He called me that. Does that make sense? Trying to totally da da da, da the bottom line. And I said, what are you talking about? Do you know who the guy was I prayed for? The guy that I prayed for, who to this day supports our ministry, is the attorney that Cheon and everybody have had up there. On Everybody, everybody is honored. Everybody is honored. He's the one that's overturning Roe vs. Wade. None of them got sent in there to break the witchcraft. God sent me in there because... He gives me the hard stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't get the, grit, the glory, but you know what? I, I get the glory. I, are you kidding? The guy got his back healed, got set free. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm talking to the guy that was at the meeting and everything, and I was like, I don't understand. You know, I was all the way there. I thought we were getting set up. Uh, you know, you just, you just, you, you're just too undisciplined or too dead. I don't know what he was saying and stuff. And I said, are you nuts? I said, you guys prayed all day. I didn't heal him. I said, I prayed what God gave me. It healed his back. And he said, you are so prideful, you didn't do anything, God did it. I said, well, I sure had to deal with the demon afterward. I sure said it sure felt like I was involved. You are so full of pride. And I'm like, you're so ignorant. you got no authority in the spirit. You don't understand how God teams together with us. I like to honor people when they go into a territory because i got news for you, the demons are trying to kill you. And if you don't give a soldier some honor, what's the motivation for him to fight? Yeah, tell him how worthless he is. You're missing it. In the presence or the presence of God, the revelation of truth, you will see in his clarity out from under your self-perception, you will see what's not there. And you will see how you judge yourself. You will see it. You don't have to be told it. I don't have to tell you guys, nothing good in you, nothing good in you. If I'm dealing with flesh, I'll, I'll, I'll hit it. Does that make sense? But I don't have to tell you about this. You know what I'm saying? Give, bring the presence of God and how, 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 how much he, he got. Do you realize God has great expectancy for you guys? He thinks you're going to win this war. <laughs> yes. God, personally, <laughs> <laughs> I think you're a little too expectant on the church today. So thank God there's some prophets and some people that are starting to get it and starting to wake up out of religious lethargy and starting to become responsible for your area that he called you to rule and reign in, that you're not, and the demons are killing people and hurting people. God uses us. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises a standard. Who do you think that is? It's you. 
It's your ability to resist the demonic. Wake up! It's your ability to walk in the truth. When suicide hits you, you know that you're not having a problem. You don't have to take drugs. You know it's a friggin' demon. And it's coming into the territory to try and take a lot of people out. I tell people all the time, you'll never understand how many people didn't kill themselves around Christmas because God had you resisting the spirit of suicide. When you start to understand how intercession really works, intercession is not the cute little prayer meetings where you pray your opinions over somebody's husband or wife. Come on, you want to be humble? What's the most humble I can be? Oh, God, I ate carpet for you all night. I was on my face eating carpet for you. God, fix her. She don't know what the hell she's doing. That's not humble. That's praying your opinion. Humble is God. I don't know how to pray. I don't know what her call is. This might be part of her training. Maybe she needs to, I don't know. God, not my will, your father. You, the Holy Spirit makes intercession. When I don't know how to pray, let him pray. Do you realize that's all I really do? I can't even pray in English anymore. Because it seems so stupid, especially in the presence of God. Everything I say sounds dumb. I think he only lets me talk human to human because I, I'm such a goof sometimes. Does that make sense? But to God, I'm just like, what do you want me to do? Where's it go? But you, you're in charge. It's more fun when you do it anyway. It works better. What's the most humble you can be when you get your opinion off, your th off the th throne of the temple? Remember, and Paul said until there comes a falling away. And, and the man, of, the son of perdition, who sits in the temple of God, showing himself to be God, exalting himself above all that's called God. What do you think that is? It's that id. What's the temple of God? Didn't Paul say, you, "Don't you know you're the temple?" He spelled it out. Didn't Jesus say, uh, "No"? Didn't religious men think it was a building? Didn't Jesus say, "It's your body"? Raise this temple up in three. I'll raise it in three days. Body. Paul said, "Your body." He says, "Until there comes a falling away, God's not the author of confusion." Maybe Paul was confused. And he meant the, the, is going to sit in a building. No, he's talking about what sits here. Come on, you're really broken. You go to, you go to, you, you're, you're broken. Your life's, some, you come off of drugs. You come out of prostitute, whatever. You come out of just, who knows what, maybe nothing. But you come out of something. You're so broken before God. God, I know nothing. You humble yourself. You humble yourself. But about the time you start getting enough head knowledge, that little thing starts running in control. You get in position in church. You start controlling lives. And you're manipulating now using your religious words. Seen that anywhere? How about like everywhere? No, until there comes a falling away. Paul said, there therefore remains an entering in. You still haven't crossed into the presence of God. You, this thing's still ruined. Why do you think God gave you tongues? Right. Maybe to bypass. You, I don't know what I'm saying. You good. Because <laughs> if you did, you'd try and control it. Do you realize that people that have been hurt will no longer trust their heart, but they go into major control? You know that, right? In the relationships, they'll try and control relationships. It's all based in brokenness. But control, especially when it's outside the will of God, is witchcraft. And we get all kinds of manipulation. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to pick on women. But we get a lot of manipulation in the church. You guys ever seen some of the women's groups? And the Hey, you ever seen some of the prophetess women who go to town on the devil's head? Those, that's cool. But I also see a lot of the other stuff where the spirit, does that make sense? Or, or where there, everybody's attacking the pastor's wife because she's got to be Jezebel. I love it when these books come out, right? The new Jezebel book gets out, and all the Christians buy it, and then everybody starts attacking everybody. I'm not beating up women. No, no. Oh. All right. Anyway, was any of this good? Did I finish all the stories? Yes, you did. <laughs> all right. I didn't go into all the things that are possible with a man of God, but trust me. Uh, you need to tighten your lug there. Uh, tr uh, Trust me, destruction can be averted when you go into territories. You have no idea principalities come down or can't come back in. You have no idea what is possible as the anointing increases on your life and as you will let God take you through the process. You have no idea. And we'll go through some of that other stuff. If I just started shooting my mouth off with that, you guys would go, what, what? You would not believe the kinds of authority and what, how God will use you to change territories, to shield people. You didn't know we're supposed to shield sinners until they get saved, did you? You thought you were supposed to let them die in their sins so they'd go to hell, huh? That'll teach them damn sinners a lesson. No, we're supposed to lay our lives down and stand in the gap. The way Moses stood in the gap, the way Jesus stood in the gap for us, he died for us when we really got dead in our sin. See, it's the wrong spirit that's being imparted and it's, you know, being done under fear. Anyway, was that fun? Yeah. yeah. Good. Is that fun? Anybody feel hurt or offended? Do I have to, do I have to pray for any wound healing?
Sorry. Well, they should have given me a cup. Question? I want to pray for people. And let me do questions in just a second. I want to pass this around um, uh, for an offering. God said the best thing to sow into was the revelations of the kingdom. He said the kingdom of God is like a priceless pearl where a man took everything he had and sold to buy that. Why? People tell me, they go, you can't buy the anointing. What are you talking about? He who gives to a cup of ro- a prophet a cup of water in the name, what's, what's a cup of water? Refreshment, substance, uh, in the name of a prophet receives a prophet's reward. Does that make sense? It's all through the Bible. I learned if, you, I learned if I saw an anointing or revelation or something on somebody else that I wanted, I sowed into it. And, when I, and I served it. I did everything. Why? Are you promoting the man? No, you're promoting God's call on the man. Do you understand? And therefore, you're sowing into God. Don't ever give to a man. Oh, I like him. He's a dynamic speaker. No, sow to the that was the, that was the spirit of God. I got something. Why? Where your money is, where your heart, your money is, your heart is also. So if a Madonna CD is more important, you're going to pull that spirit into you off of her than the things of the kingdom. Now, do you realize when you sow into what we're doing, we're able to purchase more radio time, more TV time? What does that do? Brings more people into the revelation. What will that ultimately do? Make less warfare for you and bring about a better presence of God over the entire nation and around the world. Revelation is what we need. It builds up our authority and our ability. So right now, we're plowing into New York. You don't think that's some strong witchcraft? And a big city, six million people. You don't think that's the, the main number one target of a terrorist attack? And God said, if you don't begin to build a, a wall in there, greater destruction is going to get hit. I'll tell you another time, several destruction, including when I went into Ohio and been going to New York for the last nine months. Did you guys, all over the news, my Ohio people called the whole Brooklyn Bridge conspiracy. I've been saying five blocks from there was averted. The whole Ohio bombings were averted. That whole thing was uncovered. Why? When you go into the darkness, when there's a man of God in authority, that which is covered is uncovered. When there's no authority, you can have as much religion as you want. It's not. Does that make sense? It can stay hot covered and the plan. And the reason that men in the natural, I started to tell you about Washington, D.C., and some of the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the security forces, the national security forces, what things are moving toward the chip or the mark and all that stuff. You know why? Men are going to try. Huh? Talk about that. Huh? <laughs> and I gotta, we got to pray and go. Men are going to try to control men. Do you want to know why? because we're not doing our job. Because spirits control men and motivate men. Because we're not, we're not bringing prophets into position. We're not learning to be in that position to where we, that anointing on us. It's not me. It's the anointing. It's his presence. It's the praying in tongues. It's the getting the revelation. It's getting out from under the religious thing. It's trying to beat me to a pulp that I do not realize who I am in God. Therefore, when God says something, I won't believe him. What do you mean you're going to use me to affect the, the spirit of the world? What are you talking about? Do you not realize our website already got a billion hours of prayer committed by several groups because of the information that put together? You have any idea of the warfare trying to keep people in uh, helping me do any of this stuff because most people can't stay focused at that level of pressure. But do you have any idea how that's affecting the world? I don't know about you, but I'd like to affect the spirit of the world. Hello? Does that make sense? But because we're not doing our job, men will have to control men. And you can't control men because terrorists already don't care about their life. So even if they don't... See, the only people that will be controlled will be the good men. The unrighteous men, doesn't matter. They will go while you're walking down. They'll grab a rock if they have to or a baseball bat. They'll bash your window in when you're at a stoplight, pull you out, chop off your arm, swipe your arm under the thing, take your money out of the bank, buy the bomb, and do it anyway. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're already illegal. So even the... The ideas of controlling every man to try to stop terrorists, and that's what this thing's moving, will not work. The only thing that will work is when we begin to rule and reign with Jesus, and all these things are exposed, or the hearts of the terrorists change because of the spirit motivating them. Do you understand that where the Dalai Lama and them do this witchcraft and open up these demons, you then get the Al-Qaeda and a lot of this following in? They're the slaves under these demons because they're listening to the d- demonic realm. But their first is being done by opposite prophets by opposite and the by the way the opposing team knows about the spirit realm not the american church those are not spiritual leaders they are religious leaders there is a difference we don't need to listen to religious leaders we don't need religious teaching we need spiritual leaders teaching us jesus was not a religious leader he attacked religious leaders he was a spiritual leader he gave him revelation and demonstrated and took authority hello Spirit of religion is what comes down to shut down every move of God. All right, is that cool?
so into what we're doing so we can make a penetration in New York, and we need to get radio happen in this territory, too. All right, let me pray for a couple people. Um, yeah, just move this so that nobody bu bunks it over. That's the main thing. Well, what's your um, experience or background? Like, um, hold on just a second. And there's CDs in there, so take CDs. That's what they're for. You've been watching Profit.TV. Please join us next time as we continue to bring you cutting-edge spiritual fun? technology. If Anybody you want to have your spiritual weapon up? sharpened, be sure to tune in to the next episode yeah. of Profit.TV. If you'd like more information, call 818-994-4008. Four zero zero seven eight one eight nine nine four four zero zero seven. You've been listening to Profit.TV. You can join us live right now on the World Wide Web at Profit.TV. Again, www.profit.tv is where we sharpen your spiritual weapons using the latest in spiritual technology. This is Seamus from Dublin, and you've been listening to Profit.TV. Please join us next time as we continue to bring you the latest in cutting-edge spiritual technology.